Sis and tell. Sis and tell. A whole lot of talk about a whole lot of nothing. Sis and tell. We meant to stand up. You that was since on TV. On TV. When we hop on the phone. She as you know, it's the place you wanna be. Sis and tell. How are you? Well, I finally, <laughs> <laughs> I finally, oh, uh, well, I can always, I can yeah. sort of uh, guess what's coming next. Well, I do. Well, no, you can't. I no, you can't. I can't guess what's coming next, but I can guess whether it's funny or dire or get, you won't but believe it. But sometimes my dire is not dire. You yeah, know? Exactly. That's true. That's true. Okay, I got, go ahead. Well, I finally got suckered in to going into Bed Bath & Beyond. Well, Look, it closed. No, not yet. Has yours closed down? I don't know. This is like, I feel like it's the last blockbuster is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I drive by the last blockbuster, which is now, I don't know, a, a Chinese restaurant. I don't know what it is, but it still looks like a blockbuster to me because yeah. I spent so many hours walking up oh, and down God. the aisles. People don't, the time that people currently spend, you know, channel surfing multiply that by 10 and that's how much time I used to spend walking up and down and then I'd finally decide on something and it didn't and have the somebody would take yeah it. somebody yeah. would take the last one or do oh gosh anyway so back to bed Terrible. bath and beyond so yeah, they've this had the this, end of an era so they had sad. a big sign in front of it that says 40 to 60 percent off I'm already suspect right <laughs> and <laughs> they should just give it to you if you and like then, it enough they should just say here take but, it they're so desperate, they made a sign and put it on top of this car that's just driving around the shopping <laughs> complex. It's no. a, and not even like a nice car. It says 40 to 60% off. And I'm like, they must be desperate. I'm going inside. So none of the shopping carts work, first of all. They've all been like locked. Like someone tried to remove them from the premises. And then, yeah. they, you know how they lock up? So me and this guy are trying to get these carts. He's flipping this cart on right side up. And I go... I think all those carts have been flipped over for a reason. <laughs> and we both realized that I guess, I guess we can only buy what we can carry. So we I walk in, man. Oh my and gosh. It, it's I, like a game show. It was, but supermarket sweet, but it's <laughs> bed, bath, and beyond. It is not it is not good. Don't waste your time. Okay. I was so I, I went in there and the first thing there's this couple next to me and, and they're on their phone looking at something and I go, So I, are you also checking the prices compared to what Amazon says they are. And they go, no, but that's a good idea. And I looked up, they were selling this like volleyball net for $160, but minus like 40%, right? So it's dropped down to a certain amount, but still it's cheaper, much cheaper on, on Amazon. Amazon. That's yeah. Sad. This is why they, this is why they died. And the towels, you know, I'm always like, oh, I, I could use new towels, but they, it's like they replaced them with towels. And I put that in quote, <laughs> in quotes. They were Sand not paper. Good yeah. And they were not, they were not those good towels. They're like those thin and it hurts to dry yourself with them. And guess <laughs> like, what? It's like crappy toilet paper. It, it Don't is. Don't do it. Don't it's like do Scott's it. toilet paper. Yeah. That's what the, that's what they felt like, those towels. So I, I, and guess what? Marshall's is right next door. And I just walked over to Marshall's and I ran into 10 people that I'd just seen at Bed Bath & Beyond. That's so sad. Wait, can we go back to the volleyball net? Does, is, does that fit into the beyond category? Yes. How does. do they reconcile <laughs> selling a volleyball net? That seems very off-brand even for the I have to say that 75% of Bed Bath & Beyond is now beyond it's because <laughs> it is yeah. <laughs> they had like entire sections of like baby toys and like random stuff but at first I was like oh you know Murray's going to college in a year I got all of my stuff for the dorms from Bed Bath and Beyond that's yep. what we would that's what we do you parents would rent a car you'd be in the whatever location your college was in and then you would go and spend god knows how much money at Bed Bath and Beyond but now we've got Amazon and Target and Costco and 
Just well, the internet in general. I will say, you know, Arthur, our oldest who just graduated college, we when we moved him in, not only did I order everything from Bed Bath & Beyond, but I pre-ordered it. You could order it to the one closest to campus, and then you show up that, you know, the day of move-in, they've got it already packaged for you, which wow. is unbelievable. But then it's sort of like, you know, when you think, I'm going to the movies and I'm not going to get snacks. That never happens. Not only do you get snacks, you supersize everything, right? Uh, how about the next size? It's only this. So you walk through and everything was marked with the university logo. There were, you know, the purple chairs and this. We started throwing everything into our cart. By the time we got to the stuff we had actually pre-selected, which oh, you didn't man. even have to prepay. They're like, if you want to put anything back, let us know. If you didn't get something, let us know. I mean, they were, they went above and beyond. So I, we did for the first two. I mean, now that we have the third going, it's, it's too late for him. He'll have to Amazon it. But for those first two, I will tell you, Bed Bath & Beyond was a lifesaver. And I loved the store. And it's prime. And it's prime was not 10 years ago. I would say in the in the past few years even. I went there for almost everything I needed that you was had, included in Bed & Bath & Beyond. I had the special whatever. So you didn't have to bring in that 20% coupon. Did you see people who would collect those? They mm -hmm. would have like 50 in their purse or in their wallet. Be like, here's one and here's one. And then finally, they were like, for an annual membership, you can get $20 off or 20% off everything, which I had. And it saved me during those college move-in years a ton of money buying everything there. I didn't even double check at Amazon because they made it so easy and convenient. And I like uh, to see stuff. I don't want to I don't want to order everything, get it, and then have to return 90% of it because it's not what it looks like. That's why I read reviews. So I do I do a lot of online shopping, but we're, we're different spectrums of our generation so right well 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 speaking of real shopping you know what we got in chattanooga this is like you know we didn't get starbucks till like six months ago no not six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> chattanooga's like on this on the slow there's this quaint things. little coffee shop in seattle <laughs> and they just opened up a store in chattanooga have oh. you heard of an espresso it's really strong coffee it Did is you so say good espresso yeah on purpose <laughs> yes <laughs> I'm doing a character. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, you're making people in Chattanooga sound stupid, and we're not. We're just, no, you're not. we you're like our local stuff. <laughs> but I will say, I think we've talked about, thanks. I think we've talked about, you know, things like Cheesecake Factory, you know, really only came like three years ago, things like that. But we got a Nordstrom rack. Oh. So we don't have Nordstrom. Mm. We just have the rack. The but rack everybody has better. said it's so good. Oh, my goodness. It is so good. It feels like having the the what are they called like the runway version of tj maxx oh yes i mean the blue jeans alone worth the price of admission but you have to be have very, a lot of stuff be very focused and it becomes yeah. like a scavenger hunt that's why you know what i have found like in stores like Nordstrom rack marshall's tj maxx i find the best stuff at the end of the rack because someone's already pulled it out been like that's cute and then decided not to get it yeah right so I'm like thank you that'll do for me <laughs> personal <laughs> shopper who is my mystery personal shopper say that again I don't know if it it glitched on my end I don't know if it glitched on yours uh oh so I'm like thank you personal shopper who is my mystery personal shopper exactly <laughs> well but the sad part about that is I did find a few pair of like these cute like pink or salmon colored cargo pants and they had like one size so then I'm thinking oh somebody must have put them on the end of the rack and then there's a whole slew of them somewhere else so then I went on a scavenger hunt trying to find them no they just only had one size left in that oh. specific brand or fashion style so that was depressing but it was very exciting I didn't go apparently there was like lines out the door there's not lines anywhere in Chattanooga there were lines out the door the first week or so so I waited till it was there for a week I joke I always think there's going to be like crazy lines to get in places when we first moved here I think Jurassic Park opened or even or Jurassic Park 2 whichever one and I made Alan get to the movie theater <laughs> like <laughs> like an hour and a half early and he kept saying I don't think we need, as we we do. Of course, I had come from Chicago and then Atlanta. I thought right. you have got to, or else we're never going to get tickets. We stood by ourselves in that line waiting for the ticket guy to finally take our ticket. He's like, I tried to tell you, you don't need to stand in line. So if you see a line in Chattanooga, you should stand in it because it must mean it's really, really, really good. That's it. Oh. <laughs> I, would, I love dinosaur movies. I would stand in line. Dinosaur and shark movies. And guess what? I think Shark Week is coming up. 
Ooh, I love Shark Week. I know how you feel about Shark Week. I love sharks. I love sharks. And when I interviewed um, one of Jacques Cousteau's grandchildren, Fabien, I think is you pronounce his that name. That is the weirdest name drop Fabien, I've ever heard. It's like French. <laughs> Fabien, <laughs> Fabien Cousteau. When he I talked. interviewed Jacques Cousteau's uh, great-grandchild. Yeah. <laughs> name drop in. Well, I interviewed two of his grandchildren, Alexandra, his granddaughter, and Fabien, his uh, grandson. And they're fascinating, of course love the water and and everything about it um the way their grandfather did but fabian was talking about how sharks get a bad rap that they're really not creatures who are aggressive that shark attacks are so few and far between but of course are highlighted because there is something you know really well it's the method interesting about that right the, it's the scary yeah the scary part and jaws he said he was really little when jaws came out and his parents wouldn't let him go but he snuck into the theater and he wasn't scared he was confused because he had always been taught that sharks were just you know one of the many sea creatures and not a i wouldn't say a docile animal but not one that was attacking you know, boats and, and people left and right. So he was just watching it as like a very young child. I don't know, four or five years old going, I don't understand what is going on. He had no, it, it probably it's looked like, so ridiculous. It looked so ridiculous to him. And so unlike the rest of us who I still, when I go into the water or hear the theme song, I freak out a little bit. Oh yeah. Well, orcas are attacking boats. Did you hear about that? No. Whales? Or oh, yeah. Orcas. There's a pod of orcas, and evidently at some point, this mama orca got hurt by the rudder of a boat. So then the next time she saw a rudder of a boat, she she attacked it, and then she's taught all the other orcas that rudders are bad, and so they go after the rudder of these boats. Come and on. And they're taking down boats. That's it's crazy. Scary. They're not trying to attack the people. They're, it's like, but it's this learned thing that they're all passing on to each other. It'll never stop. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of The Jerk. Do you ever see that movie? Why does he hate these cans so much? <laughs> I don't. I, Anybody I, who's ever I, watched I, The Jerk gets that. Sorry. Sorry. I, Why does I've he seen, hate these cans? I've seen bits and pieces of The Jerk, but I've never seen it all the way through. Yeah. All right. Speaking of The Jerk, I'm going to talk about jerky people. Okay. And not jerky people, but... I'm, I'm going to put this in context of not telling a story, but I came to a realization this week and I like woke up very early one morning and I thought this, this sort of explains the world. I had had a series of interactions with people either through work or personal life. And, um, and I just kind of simply divided the world into two categories. And I'd like to share it with you and, and discuss. Okay. I'm going to call them the blamers and the claimers, all right? Okay. And there's a spectrum of these. So it's not, you know, totally like black or white and like solid in these categories, but these are there's a spectrum, but these are the the two defined categories in my head. So the blamers are the people who typically blame the world for all of their problems. The claimers are the people who typically claim responsibility for the problems of the world. And it's very interesting when you deal with people and you realize very quickly mm. which category they fall into. And it's really, and it's, and I was dealing with a situation where on either side of the aisle of, of, uh, there was a challenging situation, there was a blamer and a claimer. And I was kind of sort of watching this, like hearing from both sides and thinking, oh my gosh, it's fascinating how people just react to situations and taking responsibility. And, and I don't think we should have to always take responsibility for everybody, right? Right. At, at the very least for ourselves. But also, we also can't be on the other side where it's never our fault, right? Nothing's ever our fault. It's just the world who's, who's to blame. How do you feel about that? Too simplified? Well, I mean, I think that's interesting, but I think it also depends on the situation, right? It's... I mean, there's situations where people, it, it makes sense to, to claim responsibility. And then there's other times where it has nothing to do with that person. Right. You can right. always, you can always, I think in both situations, you can always find a way to either claim responsibility, even if it's not yours. And you can always find a way to blame other people, even when it's your fault. Well, that's why I said there's a spectrum, right? Like you can't yeah. say, I think even if you find yourself sometimes blaming people, you're, more likely a claimer 
who then understands when somebody else is to blame, but isn't, you know, going to be out there persecuting them. The claim, the blamers, on the other hand, right, they're always blaming everybody else. It's never their fault. I it's feel never like their fault. I'm not going to be able to unsee this now. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling I'm you. Be, now I'm going to be labeling blamers or claimers for like for the, for the rest of my days. <laughs> 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 It's eye-opening. It's eye-opening. But it also, it helps you sort of put into perspective where someone's coming from. And it's not that it makes it right, but I always feel like there's, you know, there's, there's merit in at least, even if it's not your fault, right? I had a, there's a, and this is pretty common, but there was a, an awesome principal here at one of the, one of the schools, one of the inner city schools. And we're talking about how he had some huge challenges. And one of the examples was he had ninth graders who were coming in at age 17 and they were reading on a third grade level and he said Allison it's not my fault but it is my responsibility right yes, yes. and so it's that thing like he he can say I didn't I didn't make these kids how they are but I'm going to take I'm going to claim responsibility for that. this yeah so there's there's a both and where you can you can acknowledge that you didn't put somebody in that position, but at least say like even road rage if you think about it, you're gonna and I know you in Atlanta you're always experiencing this not yourself but people you know I can always say like okay maybe I should have put my clicker on sooner or maybe I should have turned faster maybe I, you know there's always I have some part in it right none of us are a hundred percent innocent and all and. I would say most of the time, there are a few circumstances, but we're not 100% to blame. So it's finding that happy medium. But it's when you when you fall into one of these traditional roles and you are on the far side of that, right? Yeah. That's where it becomes dangerous and unhealthy. Yeah. And unhealthy. I, I, yeah, I, you know, I'm a troubleshooter. So oftentimes I will try and fix things that may or may not be my fault. And then, yeah. but sometimes you can't. Yeah. And that's when my, that's, I, I, I hate those situations is when you can't fix them and you have limited control over yeah. that. And I'll tell you the converse of this, you ready for this? Cause you're really not going to be able to unsee this. <laughs> so the irony is that the blamers who blame the world for their problems will also always claim responsibility for the successes, yes. right? It's all on them. It was all they're doing. They did this. It was all about me, right? While the con, right, the claimers who claim responsibility for the problems of the world will give the world credit for all of the successes. Yes, I agree. Yeah, sounds there's like there's probably a future... hundred. There's probably a hundred like psychology books written about this already, right? But it's okay. I That's just came your... to this realization, and it helps me. It helps me. It helps, it helps me process things. It helps me navigate the world better. It helps this me is with who relationships. This is. Yeah. 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 So if you know somebody's, you know, intentions and sort of limitations, I have them too. If you, if you understand like their narrative and their perspective of the world, it, it helps you to, to deal with people better. Mm. It doesn't make it easier <laughs> necessarily or happier to have those people around, but well, it's as someone me. who pretends to be a therapist for her friends, I <laughs> you play a therapist on TV, right? Uh, like this is good uh, information on how to talk to certain people in yeah. your life, you know. Yeah. So, well, and I think the you know the intersection of those things is one of my favorite phrases, which I couldn't think of for a long time. And I finally remembered it. And you have to use it with caution because sometimes it can mean you don't care about the world, but it's this phrase. Have you ever heard this? Not my circus, not my monkeys. <laughs> have you ever heard that? No, but there's this woman who was in charge. She, we called her the badge lady when I worked yeah. at Cartoon Network. And if you lost your badge, you would, or needed a badge for a new employee, you would go to her office and she had a sign that says, um, your lack of planning is not my emergency. Ooh, and it, I love And it's that. the same yeah. intent behind not my monkeys, not my circus, well, right? Reverse it. Not my circus. Not my not circus. My monkeys. Not my monkeys. <laughs> It's a very liberating phrase. It really yeah. comes in handy, I think, when like like people are like gossiping about something, or like like a friend's coming to you and they have a problem with another friend, and you're like, you don't, you do not want to get in the middle of it. It's not something to relinquish you from the responsibility of like problems in the world or you know things that happen. That sort yeah. of responsibility. It's more, I'm not getting into this drama. This is not right. This is this well, is not my problem right. in that sense. 
Um, so I think in that sense, I love it. Not my circus and not my monkeys. Well, it's, it's one thing for a friend to come to you asking for advice about what to do about a situation that involves right. another friend. It's another thing for them just to be bitching to you about another friend. Right. 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 So that's really hard to, I don't think I have friends that do that anymore. No. I mean, well, I've like aged, either aged out of that or like pushed those people away. <laughs> I just never was attracted to the drama. No. Even the boys used to say, save your drama for your mama, but not no, my mama because no. she don't want it. <laughs> I don't want that drama. Get that drama away from me. Ew. Away. Yes. Ew. So I, we had a, speaking of drama, we had a very dramatic Father's Day experience. Really? <laughs> No, it wasn't that Well, dramatic. you only had one kid at home, right? Right. No, but we went to Columbus, Georgia, which is about 90 miles south of Atlanta because Aaron wanted to go whitewater rafting. Gotcha. And our trip started around, well, we gathered around 5. And <laughs> 5 a.m.? No, 5 p.m. Oh, Lord, no. So we, <laughs> it was 5 p.m. We, we were set up for like the challenge. That's what we had. That's what we were going to do. And Wait, you were going to whitewater raft at night? But it, the sun didn't go down till nine, and it was like a two-hour rafting trip. Got you. Oh, that's fun. So okay. it was really fun. Um, and but there are all these people, right? We're all gathered, and we're three people. And I asked this guy, I'm like, how many people can fit on a boat? And he's like, you know, like six to eight. So I'm quickly um, like <laughs> doing the math of who you're going to be stuck with, right? I'm like, okay, who are we going to be with? Look at these people. Look at these people. I <laughs> It's turning into like Survivor, and I'm looking uh -huh. to see who we can. What is that when they? Um, yeah, you, you're going to make a pact with, or yeah, yeah right. Yeah. I'm like, who can we? Who, who are can your be? allies? Yeah, yeah, who are our allies? We need allies, and I'm like, I look at these uh, two guys. They must have been brothers, and they were like six five and had the longest arms. And I'm like, hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> It's like choosing uh, kickball. Yeah, yeah like I pick you, them. I pick Tim and Tom. You want to you be? You want to be on our team? And uh, and then Murray also takes charge, and he goes, "Whoa, whoa, what's happening?" And I go, "I go, I want some strong people on our team." And he sees some people, <laughs> and <team>. he <laughs> like it's turned into, like it's not a competition, right? right. But Except, it is. It always it is. is. So yeah. I'm like, by the way, when people say that to us, it's not a competition, people. It is. It is always a it competition. Always a competition. Stop yeah. saying that to me. I mean, stop saying that to people. <laughs> oh, my God. But also, like, I, in this situation, I know I'm the weakest link, okay? Right. And <laughs> so I have to be strategic and right. funny, right? That is my, I'm the personality. I'm the, the rah, rah person. You're going to have the most fun boat and the strongest boat. Right. So, so, yes. so Murray... Um, <laughs> So Murray walks up to these three guys with beards and he's like, you look like you can survive. And they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then he finds one of the guides and he goes, uh, hey, can we pick our can we pick our teams? And the guy's like, what? Um, no, the guides will assign you. They're assigned. And I'm like, damn it. Darn. And, yeah. <laughs> darn it. So. So then we realized they're not pre-assigned, okay? Oh, that okay. we're getting, and we get into two separate school buses to go to like the liftoff point or whatever. Right. They kept on calling it the put in, and it sounded they're saying put in, but I kept on calling it the put in. Put in. Put in. <laughs> we love put in. We love. We have cool whip. Do y'all have cool whip? Because we love, we love cool whip on yeah. our put. -in. <laughs> so, so I want to go like, anywhere with white water rafting and put in. Okay. So there's. There's this one couple who looked like they were going to struggle, I have to say. They looked like they were going to have a hard time. They had short arms, okay? They had short <laughs> arms. <laughs> oh. It was their first time rafting. They get uh, on yeah. bus one. That's a we, nightmare. We get on bus two. So we get on bus two, and this these three folks get in the back with us. The, and the, the bearded guy, people? No, or, these were oh. three, a th a, like a family of three. There's this this woman. She looks like uh, she could would be in uh, friends with what's her name in Terminator Two. In yeah. what's that woman, Linda? Um, you know, oh god, um, uh, Linda Hamilton. Oh, right? Her. Yeah. So she's like, she looks like she would have been friends with Linda Hamilton. Like she's got like nice strong arms. Her husband's like all tatted up, tanned, and and like he's jacked. And their son gets on. And he uh, had on an army shirt and a shaved head, and there's an army base nearby. 
done so, and done. So I was yeah. like, so I was like, okay, maybe we'll be placed. These guys look great. So <laughs> <laughs> we're going to cozy on up to them. So then we all are meeting and the guy's like, uh, the guide's like, okay, we, we need, he starts calling out people in groups. Who's got a group of this? I'm going to, I need a group of two. So then the, um, so there's this, it starts dwindling down, dwindling down, dwindling down. He's because we're a group of three and he's not really calling groups of three. He's doing four and two. So we're getting close to our assignment and the people with the short arms <laughs> still have not. <laughs> <laughs> oh the poor short yeah, stumpy know. people Look, okay and i'm i'm five six i'm tall for a jewish girl i'm not tall for a rafter my arms right. they're a good length and i'm pretty good at paddling i just have to say water sports are are probably don't more... oversell we got it we okay, got it anyways. <laughs> so, <laughs> as, you're, as you're throwing this other poor couple under the raft it's i know fine. so yeah. anyway i was so afraid so they were like dwindling and they're like okay we, we need um we got this couple um of two we need a three and i'm like oh no so this other couple's like we're three and this other group's like we're three and they so they went off and i'm like great and Ugh. we ended up being assigned with this family with their son was had just finished the, training the army guy the army Perfect. guy so i'm like Perfect. awesome so <laughs> we're gonna call them tats and caps <laughs> So, of course, like, I start asking, I'm like, great, we're going to win. I'm not saying it's a competition, but it is, and we're going to win. Is. And um, they're like, okay. And Mad, this guy, Mad Dog, was our guide. Oh, and, even and, better. I and love he's, that. And he's, like, super outgoing, ask, uh, asking us questions. I'm super outgoing. This family, they don't want to talk. And, and I'm like, what's oh, happening? Oh, no. And I, have, I ask them questions. They answer it, but they're not, like, really mm. engaging with us, right? They don't want to talk. And at some point I said, well, this might get awkward. <laughs> you said that to them. Yeah. I was like, this might get awkward. And um, so just a warning, I, you know. Because you're so, together for two hours. That's yeah. a long time to not engage. We are together for two hours. But they, you know, they talked to us, but they just weren't giving much. They weren't really interested. In it was not a ping pong match it was right? not yeah. i was at like we were all asking questions oh how old are you what's this oh that oh so do you have dogs you know like stuff like that and usually right. people when it comes to animals they like this back and forth i couldn't well was, you can gauge how good the conversation is going to be by what i call the informational interview right the prelim where you're trying <laughs> to get just the data points and then you know like where is the intersection of our uh likes and dislikes and commonalities so yeah but they but they weren't you know usually people if you ask a question they'll be like asking they'll ask the same question right like, there's i'm an extrovert i get introverts right this was an, a family of introverts but at a certain point i'm pretty good at drawing out people who are quiet right but, and introverts actually are i think are pretty good one-on-one -on -one. yes it's just like in a party but you probably felt like a party <laughs> I, I did. I felt <laughs> like a party. party of one felt like a party of a hundred. So, so to be but fair. At one, and I'm sitting mostly in the back because it felt safe. I liked being next to the guide. At some point, the guide and this woman <laughs> fell out of the <gasps> boat pretty early on. And I on and, purpose? No. And the guy, oh. you know, you get you get bounced up and the right. guide, um, his foot had gotten stuck under something inside the boat. So he's backwards out of the oh, boat. No. And I was, I was so proud of myself. I lifted him back up. I'm sure most of it was his strength coming. I don't know how, you know, he's got, must have stomach muscles. This woman though, Aaron had to, <laughs> Aaron had to help her in. Like you're basically like pulling on someone's. Um, you have to either, get their life jacket. You get yeah. their life jacket or you get their hand. And she goes, you knock me out. <laughs> <laughs> to you or Aaron? <laughs> to Aaron. <laughs> I think he was clamoring and he <laughs> He almost got knocked out of the boat, and he must have like hit her off. Is that when you repeated your phrase? This is, this could get awkward. No, that was another time. That was another time when the guy, um, the dad, at some point, uh, he was. We did this wave, like one of the strongest waves at the end, and you can bull ride it. So that means you could go at the tip of the boat and hold on to 
the these ropes and just sit there and ride it like a bull okay so everyone had a turn except for me and Aaron didn't want to do it so the guy by the way you were just doing this motion as if you were trying to bull ride you actually look like you were on some sort of trotting horse right. That's not a bull a bull ride is gonna right <laughs> it's more it's a little bit more right, violent okay yeah, go a ahead. little more violent so um so this guy, and you basically get kind of thrown backwards. You don't get thrown out of the boat. You get thrown backwards. So after we go through the wave and he's back in the boat, um, he reaches his hand back, like, like, like all in, go team. He was like the last one to go. So he put yeah. his, he put his hand in. And so then I put my <laughs> hand in because I thought we were all putting our hands All doing a pile of hands. <laughs> right. And that's like not it. Go team. And he goes, I just was trying to get to my oar. <laughs> oh my god. I go, I told you it would get awkward. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I go, I go, it could have gotten more awkward. I could have reached in for a hug. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save that to the end. Oh. So did they ever talk? Did the family ever talk? Just a little. I mean, they answered our questions. <laughs> you know, it felt more like an interview than a conversation. If that well, I'm sense. laughing because they're on a podcast right now talking about their experience. And they're saying, we were just praying we weren't going to be with that family of three who wouldn't they shut were. up. And then <laughs> we, we got were. stuck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for listening to the latest Sis and Tell podcast. Don't forget to share us with your friends. Share us with your family. Share us with your foes. As always, this has been Amanda and Allison with a whole lot of talk about a whole lot of nothing. We'll catch you next time.